we trust that the Lord has blessed you this week, but I also pray and trust that we have obeyed God this week. Amen. Uh, I'm looking forward to God blessing in a very special, powerful way as we look around. We have a, a lot of people missing. Uh, several. I got phone calls for others. I'm not sure where they are. Uh, but look around. It, it'd be something, you know, if you look around and see who's not here, this week contact them. Let them know that uh, you miss them. It's good to see Brother Allen. He said his back was hurting this morning and didn't get much sleep, but he's here right now, and we appreciate your faithfulness. You know, God bless his faithfulness. Bottom line, God bless his faithfulness. In just a few minutes, I'll be getting into the uh, word that the Lord laid upon my heart. Uh, this has been some week worldwide. You look at all the chaos and the turmoil going around. Uh, North Korea is threatening South Korea if we do a military exercise. And you know what? God's in control of everything. Amen? And Sister Gail, I'll tell you, when you miss Sunday school, we had such a dynamic spirit here again today. And the Bible says to study, to show thyself approved unto God. I want to be approved of God, don't you? And we study in Sunday school. And it's a time of sharing thoughts and comments, and uh, God will bless you. You make the effort. The message this morning is entitled, Conformed or Transformed? What are, you know, at the end of this message, I want you to make up your mind. Are you conformed or are you transformed? In the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Notice I underlined living. You have the ability to get off the altar, to get off the path. But a living sacrifice, it takes something to stay and remain. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, acceptable and perfect will of God. To prove it. To know for a fact. Now something that's conformed molds to it. It becomes, it adapts, it becomes part of it. Sometimes it's easier, you may think, to go along with the crowd. But you know what the Bible says about the crowd? Broad as a path. Amen. Following Jesus by being transformed, the Bible says, narrow is the gate. Straight is the path. And I like what Sister Gail said in a Sunday school class here not long ago, that uh, straight doesn't mean you don't go up or down. Sometimes as you're in that straight and narrow, you may have to really start elevating yourself. And the higher you go, and the narrower it is, you might have a little bit of being afraid. Not the fear of God, but being afraid. But as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus. Being, being conformed is, is what I call peer pressure. You know what's amazing what peer pressure will do to the kids today in our school system? They'll come home, and Hank, when you and I were growing up, if we got kids, U.S. kids tennis shoes, we thought that was the greatest thing gone. And my children, I wish they were here, they called them bobo shoes. You know, they weren't in style. They, you know, that, and, and, and now, you know, parents, not me, parents are spending $180 for a pair of tennis shoes. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with this picture? You know that there are children who are shot and killed and their tennis shoes stolen? We have to be careful that we don't start conforming to this outside world. I'm not worried about you getting a gun and shooting someone, but we need to realize and stand up and be different. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Changing the three Hebrew children. They didn't conform. And, you know, to a degree, I want to say this carefully, they really weren't transformed. 
They just kept doing what they always did. They just didn't bow. They were standing like everybody did, and then when the trumpet sounded, they all had to bow down. And the king, to be nice, says, well, maybe you didn't understand what my edict was. When you hear the trumpet, you have to bow. There's a lot of trumpet blowing in the outside world, and a lot of people are conforming. You know, it's a shame, and, and I, I, I don't want to get a lot into politics, but it is a shame when all, all of a sudden a handful of people can determine what stays and what remains, or has to go. You know, a handful of people are trying to take down the Ten, Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayers and all these things. And if you think what's happening around the world today is the end of it, no. It'll come closer and closer and closer. But to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Bible in one place says, and I don't have this written down, unto the pure all things are pure. Wouldn't it be great to have nothing but pure thoughts in our heart, mind all the time? That when the devil places unkind thoughts about our brother or sister in our mind, uh, we don't conform to that spirit. We just say, get thee behind me, Satan. He is a liar and the father of all lies. You know, uh, I'm a type of person that something really, really bothers me. I like to talk to that person one-on-one. -on -one. Well, that's the biblical way. Amen? And you might be surprised. I was trained in something called reflective listening when I had my other job. And what it is is you repeat back to other people what they've said. And Sister Joan, when they hear it, by someone else saying it, a lot of times, oh no, I didn't mean that. This is what I meant. But see, the devil will make a mountain out of a molehill. My, my peace, my provider is Jehovah Jireh. It's not the outside world. People might say, well, what will you do if this happens? Just keep trusting God. Having that thought within our heart and within our mind. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye may put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Remember the toys that the kids had here a while back called Transformers? Uh, my son had one, I think his name was Optimus Prime, and he was a uh, semi-truck. If I remember right, and you make a couple turns on that toy semi truck, and it became a robot. And Optimus Prime was the man. Okay, well, if you have one of those in your closet and it's in good condition, don't get rid of it. It's worth some money today. And you know what? You're worth something when Christ is in you and He transforms you out of the old man into the new man in Christ Jesus. Now, there are some times if we're not careful. We untransform. You know what I mean? We start sliding back the way it used to be. I cannot imagine being in Egypt as a slave all those years, and finally you're set free. And God, through Moses, separated the Red Sea. And they crossed the sea on dry ground. And Hank, when the army of Pharaoh began to come after them, Moses stretched out his rod, and the waters came back together, and the army drowned. Now, they saw that, but it wasn't too long after that, they said, Moses, have you brought us out here in the wilderness to die? Weren't there any graves in Egypt? At least in Egypt, we had onions and garlic. Now, I don't know about you, uh, my wife may use some of that in today's flavoring, but I'm going home to more than just onions and garlic. The devil will try to make us look at things like we used to look at them. And that's not the way to do it. If we become that new creature in Christ Jesus, we are to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Have you ever met people that always look for the worst in people? You know, if you're not careful, you will get wrapped up in some of those conversations. I said unto the pure, all things are pure. I've heard some prayer requests that were gossip. Might as well just tell the truth, stay in the church. Amen? 
It's one thing to say, I have a friend who has a special need, and to drop it at that. I, when I was in the Navy in Pensacola, Florida, I attended a local church, and uh, the deacon there was just phenomenal. When anybody in the Navy was stationed down there, and they took the effort to look up the church in Pensacola, Florida, that deacon let all the sailors know they had a place to stay on the weekend, and you could go to church. He was a lifesaver to many, many young men. And I got to have the privilege of going there. And the young people said, Bud, there's only one bad thing about it. We get to know all you guys. And then in about 10, 12, 13 weeks after class is done, you all leave and go to your duty stations. And we sit around and think, oh, no, we're disappointed again that he or she had to leave. In fact, when I got there, Sister Joan, the uh, young people said, Bud, we will fellowship with you, but we're not going to get close to you because it breaks our heart every time when you guys leave. We'll treat you decent. And we got together, and we became just like that with the young people. They were talking about experiences. You know, your experience in life depends upon where you live. Not everybody has the same situation, but we all serve the same God. All of us don't have the same trials, but we have the same deliverer. And we were riding around one Sunday afternoon, and we came across a cotton field. And me being me from Pennsylvania, I said, oh, isn't that breathtaking? Look at how pretty that is. And they looked like I fell out of a tree or something. I said, I've never seen a cotton field before. And they said, well, I can't believe that. And I said, well, have you seen snow? Florida. And the one girl spoke up and said, oh, Bud, one time it snowed so much, I put a pie pan out and it filled up the pie pan. That's not snow. I called my dad up. I said, Dad, uh, Thanksgiving of 57, do you have the picture of that snowstorm? He said, yeah. I said, send it down to me, Dad. It showed our car sitting out there, and all you could see was the antenna sticking. I'm talking about a November snowstorm came in and it buried the car and brother Emmett they just looked at me and could not believe you know sometimes we look at people and think what you're going through is nothing but what they're going through is something amen oh I, I used to pray for people whose spouses had cancer but oh man I wanted to hit home it was another level Sometimes we, we lack the compassion that Christ, we get conformed, we, we, we get hardened, we, we say, well, that's just, that's just a thing. But you know, we have to be transformed. Jesus looked upon people, and he had compassion. I have a lot of scriptures here this morning. You know, as I was studying, I made a note, and, and, and Michael, you, I, you may need to uh, get where this one was. You just bear with me just a moment. Colossians, the third chapter, verse 10. I think it's third from the last. The very first Colossians scripture. Thank you, brother. It's nice to have someone who's like that. And have to put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. We are to reflect what Christ is. You know, we have the eclipse coming up. Sister Gail mentioned this in Sunday school class. And you know that there are people who today, at the last eclipse, became blind because they looked at it the wrong way. There are glasses that they are selling on the Internet, and some of them are being pulled back because they're afraid they're not strong enough to look at the eclipse for a long period of time. And the darkness, the moon, will cover the sun and it'll look like the sun is blocked. But you know what happens? The moon doesn't stay there forever. It moves and the sun comes back out. The devil will try to block the source of your power. But I don't believe it should stay forever. This too shall pass. God is a way maker. He, he, he has a way to do all these things. 
And it says, where there is neither Jew or Greek, nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Lithian, wander free. But Christ is in all, Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. You see, in the early church, it was a Jewish church. But now they're saying, you can't be conformed to your old way of thinking. You've got to be transformed. Because now we're neither Jew nor Greek. We're there, and we're neither circumcised or uncircumcised. Think of that. But Christ is all in all. As I was studying for this, and I made a little note down here, and it said, what happened to the United States Senate and congressmen that stood on the gates of our, or steps of our Capitol after 9-11, and they sang a song as one. I was so proud of that moment. I hated what happened prior to that, but our government stood as one. We have such a divide, division going on in the country today, it's a shame to even think about it. When a state senator... I, I don't know whether I can get in trouble for this or not, but I want you to think about this. And when a state senator says that our current president ought to be assassinated, there is something wrong with American thought process. When people get together and they begin to protest and all of a sudden people get killed, there is something wrong with that process. When church families get together, and if we're not careful, there can be, uh, come a division among the believers. That ought not to be. In fact, as we were singing that song, uh, I, I thought of this in Jude. Jude is only one chapter, okay? So I'm not going to say chapter one. But listen to what it says here. Uh, but those speak evil of those things which they know not. You know, a lot of people say a lot of things about topics they have no idea about. One of the foremost authors of Raising a Child, Dr. Spock, never had children. Excuse me. Excuse me. Don't you talk to me about raising children. You may have a thought process about it, but you don't have the real experience. Or you might say, well, I babysit. There's a big difference from babysitting and having that little bundle of joy 24-7. Okay? And, and then you say, Lord, help me to raise them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. God has blessed us with good enough health that little Delilah, uh, we may be around for a long time in her life and have influence. As you were teaching your, your, your grandchildren school, you're not going to teach them how to subtract, you're teaching them how to ask forgiveness. See, that's so important. That, that's transformation. When all of a sudden, you know, little children do not have to be taught how to lie. You know that? You don't have to teach them. That's automatic in them. That's called the Adamic nature. And we need to realize that there is a place by God that we can get transformed, that the desire to sin is eradicated from our life. I'm not saying you won't ever be tempted again. But the desire to, there's a big difference from a desire and being tempted. Okay? Don't, don't, don't be like the lady that, you know, said, I, I said, God, if it's your will that I have a donut this morning, let the parking place right in front of the donut store be open so I can park there. And she said, it only took me nine trips around the block to find the open place. Well, you know what? If you keep after something long enough, it's going to appear to be the will of God. And it's not the will of God. But we can make it. We can justify anything you want to. But, I, but what the, thus saith the word of God? Have we lost the fear, the, the, the reverential respect of God? God is still on the throne. It says here, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and run greatly after the heir of Balaam for reward and punishment is again saying of Korah, these are spots in your face of charity. Charity is love. If there's ever a time that we needed love, now is that day and time. It has to be an understanding spirit. He said there are spots in our feast. 
I don't know about you, but I don't want things to interrupt a good time in the Lord. I've told this story before, but I think it bears witness. Uh, a lady by the name of, uh, her first name was Martha. Uh, she was praying for the Holy Ghost up in Pennsylvania. I was just a member of that church, just a teenager. And she was praying and praying and praying. And she got up and just, just like that, quit praying. And they asked her why. She said, uh, I got thinking about a bologna sandwich. She just quit praying. We were in revival. She came back that next night. She ate a bologna sandwich before she came to work or church. And she went up there and was praying. And just like that, she quit praying again. And we asked her why. She said, well, the thought came to me on a cow or the horns in front of the ears or the back of the ears. See, that kind of stuff isn't from God. Okay? But there came a time in her life that her children began to pray. And I saw her come down and physically drag them out of the altar and says, we're not praying to God anymore. And it wasn't a short time. Sadly, but true, she came back to the Lord. And you know what her number one prayer request was? Pray for my unsaved children. See, the devil will put little hindrances there every so often. And he'll try to make us conform to the outside world. You know, uh, some people, I've, I've heard country singing saying, I was country before country was, was in, or good. Well, you know what? I want to be a Christian 24-7. I, I want to reflect God's light in me. I'm to be an example of the believers. When we're transformed, we will walk by faith and not by sight. Have you ever had to walk by faith? And look like all around you? It's not going to happen, but you just kept on believing. You held on until the last hurrah, so to speak. Job one time says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Look what he went through. He lost all of his children. Basically, all his possessions were, were taken from him. His wife, who was supposed to be a mainstay support for him, said, you know, why don't you just curse God, die, and get it over with. You know what he said? You talk as one of the foolish women. That's not what he needed to hear. So some good friends came over to comfort him and asked Job what he did wrong. Think of that. It's like the whole world was coming in on him. But you know what he said? In my flesh I shall see. When his flesh was rottening off his body, think of that. He said, yet in my flesh I shall see him. That's being transformed. That's not going by way of what everybody else does. You know, we talk about the good old days. Well, I don't know how many of you women like to go home today to a wash tub and a washboard and do all your clothes. Isn't it great just to throw them in the washing machine and go off and do something else altogether? You hear that buzzer, you go down and you put them in the dryer, you turn it on for the right thing, and away you go. Now. Uh, don't be like that one commercial where they talked about being rookie. It showed a young girl taking stuff out of the washing machine, and it was a white blouse and a red sock, and everything was pink. And the mother said, rookie. Well, you know, if we learn from our mistakes, that's one thing. But you know what insanity is? Doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. If you only find peace through Christ, how do you expect to find peace anywhere else? How many times have you said, Lord, if you just get me through this one thing, I'll be faithful? Well, he remembers those. He takes our sins and casts them into the sea of forgetfulness. But he has the book of remembrance, church. If I made promises to God, they're not idle words. I will give an account for every idle word. Okay? But God remembers. If we make promises, and I, I knew a state overseer's wife that one of the songs, that he's saying, if it be thy will, Lord, to send me o'er the sea. And when she came to that verse, she wouldn't sing it. She said, oh, it may have been just a song. She told me this personally, she said, but I think if I sing it in spirit to the Lord, that's almost like a prayer. Lord, I'll be what you want me to be. I surrender all, Lord, I surrender all. Do you really mean it? The things come in and try to pull us away. The next slide on Colossians, Michael. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, 
Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. That takes some transformation sometimes. Forgiving those who have done us wrong. And you know forgiveness, I've said it before and I've heard it, is not so much for the other per person as it is for me. The other person could probably care less whether I'm upset or not. In fact, you probably make their day to let them know you are upset. It's, it, it, it doesn't matter. I preached the message in Philadelphia a long time ago. We have to get to a place where it doesn't matter. Had a member come to me and said, Bud, when does that time come? I said, I can't tell you. But you will know when it happens. She no longer attends this church, but she saw me here a while back, and she was smiling. She goes, I got to that place. I said, what place? It doesn't matter. And she had joy. You know, she wasn't walking around always depressed all the time, but every so often the devil would just flare that thing up in her mind, and it just sap the joy from her. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you come here to this morning and you don't have any joy, I feel sorry for you. We, we need to get transformed by the renewing of our mind that we can prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. And it says, and above all things, put on charity. Little children know whether you love them or not. Don't ask them, do you love me? And they'll tell you. You don't believe it? Ask them, you know, if you've had a bad hair day, you ask a little child, do you like my hair? They'll be honest. And don't get upset when they're honest with you. You've asked them a question, and we want children to be honest, don't we? We want the Lord to be honest with us. And Lord, if we get down and begin to pray and say, Lord, if there be any secret fault in me, and if he begins to show us, don't get upset. He's trying to transform us. To get us out of that being conforming and to say, well, you know, you ever hear the saying? That's close enough. Is this like horseshoes and atomic bombs that you get close, that counts? No. Nah. No, God wants us to be spot on. Amen. If he says this, then we need to do this. If we get transformed, I've heard people say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spit on somebody if they were on fire. And I thought, isn't that a sad statement to make? God may want you to be the very person to reach out and touch that soul, but we get conformed to the rationale of the outside world and miss the flavor of God, which is the bond of perfectness. You cannot be perfect without love. That's the bottom line. It is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule, I underline that, in your hearts. It just can't be something that is passing by. It has to rule. It has to be supreme. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called into one body, and be ye thankful. You know, if we're not careful... We fail to thank God for the everyday occurrences that we have. You'll never miss your car until it breaks down. If you get in and it cranks up, wouldn't it be nice to say, thank you, Lord? Sit down to a meal. My father-in-law used to say, well, every time he ate pinto beans and cornbread, he almost cried because it saved his life many a time. Okay? Nothing wrong with pinto beans and cornbread. But you know what? If God blesses you with something else every so often, thank God for that. Be thankful. Be ye thankful. And there's times that we need to thank God for what he has brought us from. The other day I was in my backyard. I just feel impressed to say this. I looked around, saw my home. I said, God, I want to thank you how you have blessed me. When I asked my wife to marry me, I looked at her and I said, Honey, before you say anything, you need to know something. I plan to pastor, and we will probably never own a home. I want to go into the ministry and hear you say time and time again, I wish we had a home. I wish we. That was the understanding that we, want, we needed to have. Because I, I knew it would be tough enough sometimes, probably getting into certain situations. And I didn't need, well, we'll never have a home, never have a home. But you know what? God has blessed abundantly. Seek ye first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. This keep the, the, the first thing, the primary thing, the primary thing. And God will bless us. Next slide, Michael. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Singing with grace. See, we're saved by grace. But there's also a grace that is more than just salvation. It is the power and the spirit of God. Don't get so used to things that you fall asleep spiritually while you do it. I'm going to repeat that. Don't become so habit-forming that we can do it with our eyes closed and the meaning is not there. When I was in boot camp, we had our rifles uh, and exercise like this and up. And I just kept it up and kept it up. And I got daydreaming. And when everybody went like this, I went like that. And you know, you sort of stick out in the crowd. And the company commander barked and he said, Sedwick, give me 10 push-ups. Yes, sir. I said, permission to put my rifle down, sir. He says, denied. Wrap your hands around it and give me 10. I'm in a gravel place. I gave him 10 and I stood up at attention. I said, permission to pick the gravel out of my knuckles, sir. He said, granted, I got little scars now on some of my knuckles from that. You know, every time we exercised after that, I was very aware of what I was doing. There are some times we don't learn from our mistakes. And God is good and he's gracious to us. But all it, we've, we lose, Sister Gail, that reverential fear of God. Uh, because God's judgment is not sure. I, it's sure, but it's not quick. Well, I got away with that one. No, you haven't got away with it. He has a book of remembrance. You know, one time he wrote in his book of remembrance about the Amalekites. He said, there'll be a day in time they will be utterly destroyed. Saul comes along and he was chosen for that mission. And the Bible says, you know the story, how after he killed, he saved the king and he saved some of the best of the, the cattle and the you know, the sheep. And the Bible declares, and he went home another way. You read the story. And the man of God was moved on to go see Saul. And guess what? God told him which way to go, and he, he caught up with him. See, he didn't come home the way he was supposed to, but you can't, out, you can't run from God. And when the man of God talked to Saul, he said, basically, I'm paraphrasing, give him a report. And he said, oh, I, we've done all that the Lord has commanded. He said, we've killed them all. But who they said spare? The king. The man who could organize another army. And he says, what meaneth the bleeding of the sheep and the lowing of the cattle? Oh, that's for a sacrifice. But the people, the people pressed me. That's why we did it. God said one thing. I don't care what the people said. They needed to be transformed and obey what God would say. And that's when the Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Oh, you know, we, we can sort of justify it. Don't be like the man that was flying on an airplane sitting beside a preacher and he got rough wind. And, and the man said, I just made a promise to the Lord. If we get down, preacher, I'm going to give half of what I own to your church. And it landed. And the preacher walked up and says, okay. He said, no, no, I made a better bargain with God. If I ever get back on another one, you can have it all. Well, that's not how it works. We need to find a place by God that we do what we say. Stand up and be counted. America was founded on principles, principles, and they were godly principles. They were people who were known as minute men. In other words, they didn't stand around waiting for the enemy to come. They kept on working. They were farmers and did whatever they had to do. But in a minute's notice, they could get their guns and be ready for battle. Reading the Old Testament when they rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, they worked. But when the trumpet sounded on one section of the wall, everybody came to defend that, that part. We can't say, that's not my job. We're responsible for souls. And 
We live in a day and time, if we're not careful, we don't even know our neighbors' names. We just get so busy. My dad built a garage when I was a child, and Brother Curtis, the neighborhood showed up and helped lay cinder block, not expecting a penny for it. The women, just not my mother, the women cooked food and fed the men as they worked. Today, I'm not even sure you can pay your neighbors to help you. We're living in different times. I realize that. But boy, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all, I circle or underline that, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and to the Father by him. Brother Curtis, if you will. Everything we do, do is unto the Lord. We need to be edifying him in all things. Pardon me for referring to my great-granddaughter. We were so concerned when her name was going to be Delilah. And I heard rumors that, well, we're going to call her Lily, or we'll call her this, or call her that. We've called her Delilah ever since day one. And you know what? It's just a name. But that name, when it's spoken now, takes me to my precious great-granddaughter. She's my TV buddy. And I'll sit her up on a pillow with me, and I'm here to tell you, she'll watch TV. I mean, she'll just stare at it. And she watches what I watch, not what Granny would like for her to watch, but what I watch. And she's just intense. And I thought, Lord, help me bond with her to such a place that she will want to be in the house of God. And if Mama doesn't bring her, or if Granny doesn't bring her, God's blessed me with a truck, her with a car, that she can sit in. Children can't drive to church. Your grandchildren, they can't drive to church. And guess what? If you're going to bring them to church, bring them to Sunday school. Not only will the children be fed, but you'll be blessed in the adult class out here as well. We need to get transformed, renewing of our mind. Let old things begin to pass away. We are such a blessed family of God. You realize how blessed we are? We are blessed. Now let's pass this blessing on to others. Shall we stand? Several scriptures. In fact, I'll be speaking tonight and uh, I may be going back to some of these scriptures. I, I dumped over about four or five. But I want to obey God this morning. Amen? I want to see our country get back to where they can stand as one and sing a song magnifying God. The Bible says, let there be no division or schism among the body. Same way with the family of God. We need to stand as one. I want to see souls saved in Sunday school, sister. Oh, that would thrill my soul. But in order for a sinner to get saved, the sinner needs to be in the house of God. Lay some soul upon my heart. And love that soul through me. And may I humbly do my part to win.